Again, it's my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, which is my dear friend, Alex Giraldi. Alex uh, is our physician associate who is also a co-chair for this webinar, and he's really been very instrumental in our developing this uh, pediatric limb differences service here at UCSF in the past four or five years. So Alex is going to talk about his role as a PA in, uh, in his experience. All right, Alex, uh, let me see if I can stop sharing. You got it? Yeah, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Draldi, and I'll be discussing incorporating a physician assistant within a limb practice. Just briefly about myself, I graduated PA school in 2019 and started at UCSF Pediatric Orthopedics in March of 2020, a couple of days before COVID as my first job out of school. I have no relevant disclosures. Quickly, my objectives today, to provide insight into our practice specifics and how we obtain referrals, discuss the varied roles within a successful interdisciplinary team, examine a physician assistant's function within a limb deformity practice, and identify areas of success and routes for improvement. Hopefully this talk can provide guidance into creating and optimizing limb deformity practice in your area, along with how to best utilize other physician assistants like myself to grow and improve your practice. This map is a visual representation of how we as a center and subspecialty interface within the greater Northern California region. We work as a hub and spoke model with a cross bay team and Oakland serving as the main hub and level one trauma center with multiple satellite facilities in the surrounding cities. Our Oakland institution is broken down into six subspecialties, seven attending fellowship trained orthopedic surgeons and five advanced practice providers, including four physician assistants and one nurse practitioner. Each advanced practice provider, PA or NP is aligned within one attending physician, which allows for both cross training and superior patient centered care. We use the Access Center to improve outreach, not only on a local level, but also on a county, state, national, and international level. The Access Center works as a bridge between us, referring providers, and our patients. Utilizing and having the convenience of systems like the Access Center creates an efficient avenue for patient identification and scheduling. The scheduling is predetermined based on a decision tree, which cross-matches established diagnoses with providers who see those conditions ultimately independently scheduling patients to the correct providers within a timely manner. Our referral handout demonstrates our current efforts to improve access to limb care for patients on a local, national, and international level through a multidisciplinary team approach. In the center, you can see our wide-ranging interdisciplinary team with key team members from physical therapy, occupational therapy, orthotics and prosthetics, pediatric pain specialists, and traumatologists, including both adult and pediatric, as well as upper and lower extremity specialists. For our international patients, we have access to programs that provide assistance with interpreter services, transportation, on-site housing, as well as food and other basic necessities. Now, specifically into our core team. Our team functions as a unit from both the inpatient and outpatient side. From the outpatient side, we are primarily located in Oakland, where Dr. Savarwal, myself, and Kay see patients both individually and together in a shared clinic on Wednesdays. One Friday a month, we have a combined rehab and orthopedic clinic where we see patients on an in-person and or virtual setting with other teams to evaluate and formulate surgical planning, direct inpatient rehab admissions, and outpatient post-op follow-up. While in these clinics, social work assists with emotional, financial, and social needs, including financial burdens, transportation, and family engagement. PT assists in guiding patients from a preoperative standpoint with something we call prehab, where patients become comfortable preoperatively using their new assisted devices and postoperatively by preserving joint range of motion, muscle strengthening, and ultimately advancing weight bearing status. And orthotics and prosthetics aids our patients with custom hip abduction braces, foot plates for our tailor spatial frames, custom ankle foot orthoses, upper extremity resting splints, as well as lower extremity prosthesis. Currently, I practice as both a limb specialist and as a general ortho PA. This allows me to see patients as an independent provider, as well as within a combined clinic setting, creating an environment that challenges me while having a built-in resource like Dr. Sarwal for more complex and challenging cases. 
Mondays, I have general clinic where I see more rotational non-op complaints, including developmental alignment rotational concerns, as well as trauma and fractures. Wednesdays are limb-focused side-by-side clinics with Dr. Several. In my clinic, I will see both new limb patients as well as our current lengthening and post-op patients. Preoperatively, this allows me to explain in detail and get patients comfortable with our tailored spatial frame lengthening and magnetic nail lengthening devices. Postoperatively, this allows for more demanding follow-ups like active tailor spatial frame lengthening patients who require strut changes or dynamization. Something unique about our Wednesdays is the patient and family engagement that occurs in our waiting room. By having all our limb patients be seen on one specific day, it allows for this unique self-directed interaction between patients who can then socialize and support one another while waiting to be seen. On Thursdays, I have OR coverage days and act as the first assist along with our residents on our complex lengthening and reconstruction cases. This allows for continuity of care through a pre-op, intra-op, and post-op phase. And lastly, on Fridays, I have a general clinic in the morning and again, a limb clinic in the PM. In the outpatient context, we have improved our practice by utilizing universal note templates across clinics to allow for seamless transition from one provider to the next. I have created pre-op and post-op educational documents for our patients to take home and further educate themselves, as will be shown in the next slide. In the photo to the right, you can see the post-op Taylor spaceship room covers that I make for our patients so they feel more comfortable and at peace while having our lengthening devices on their extremities. In the inpatient setting, I round on all our post-op patients weekly, and Kay and myself provide teaching on post-op protocols to both patients and nursing staff, including pin care and lengthening schedules. And lastly, while on call one week out of the month, I cover the ER consults, the outside hospital consults, primary care consults, while also rounding on all four patients and first assisting in the OR. On our website, we have patient education PDFs and videos in multiple languages. Preoperatively, these are great resources to provide families with so they have realistic expectations and education. Postoperatively, families can re-educate themselves if they forget or if they need reminders on how to use our devices. For example, the ERC. For those patients who see us from a visiting city, state, or nation, we have our specific physical therapy protocols in PDF documents to share with both families as well as practicing PTs. While we are very blessed to have all the resources we have here at UCSF, we succeed on many avenues, but there's always room for improvement. From a success standpoint, being surrounded by team members that want to advance patient care is paramount, constantly working to cultivate an environment of inclusion and education. From a management leadership support front, we utilize leadership to align our goals and mindset to continually grow our practice. This includes things like CME conferences and outreach activities like family picnics, as well as pushing for advancing individual personal education. Lastly, we utilize our patient reported outcomes as an interface to improve and advance the physical well beings and mental well beings of our patients throughout their deformity correction. Well, what we've done and are currently doing is successful to a degree, there's always room for more. From an outreach standpoint, one of our goals is to continue to expand and truly become an international limb deformity clinic that other institutions can use as models for success. I wanna improve outreach, not only to our community of patients, but also to the community of medical providers and PAs like myself to enhance autonomy within our field and expand the mid-level provider scope. Funding is also very important. Giving patients the outlets for philanthropy and ways to donate to enhance patient engagement and investment while also improving clinic resources and patient experiences. And one thing that I thought was really interesting to come up with be to build some sort of HIPAA compliant form where patients and families can communicate and support one another while contemplating surgery actively in lengthening phases and those working on readjustment back into regular daily life after correction. Everything we do is to create moments like these captured in this video. This is our annual limb lengthening family picnic where we interact with patients outside of scrubs and not in medicine mode. At this event, all are welcome, pre-op, post-op, and previous patients. This event creates an avenue for patient interaction, raw engagement, and social support. One of the most moving aspects in this is the patient testimonials. Our patients encourage each other to be themselves, although they may look and function differently. Please enjoy.
We were just sitting and chatting with our team and we were like, we need to get together to sort of bring that community together so they can really interact and talk with each other. The picnic was very nice. I met a lot of new people and I saw my physical therapist after a long time of not seeing them. Yeah, I met a lot of new people in different stages of their journey. I'm so glad I get to see all, like, all the doctors and all the patients here. Yeah, we're having fun, so I get to meet more people, like uh, Dr. Sabal's daughter and all those kinds of people. I want to thank uh, Dr. Sabal, Alex, and Kay for changing my life, and uh, yeah. It was fun. I like meeting other people and the activities like the balloon animals. My favorite part was probably uh, the face painting and the balloon animal station. Also, I got a blue, I got a balloon sword. I met this little kid, almost like the same as me, but just with different challenges. He was shy at first, but he started asking me questions like, how were you born this way? And I expressed him saying that I was just born like this, like you. And I said, everybody's different. I felt, I felt like I'm not alone. Thank you for the ones who participated on my surgeries. Thank you for all the doctors out there. You guys are the best. You help people heal, and so I want to say thank you. We're going to go to the next one because it was really fun. Great. Thanks, Alex. That was great. Thank you.